Hi guys, so if you've seen some of my recent videos, I've been making lots of these figures up from uh, WizKids Frameworks and the great thing with these little sets is you get lots of little spare bits left over which is great as obviously you can mix and match some of the other uh, figures that you assemble but I thought rather than using that, I'm going to uh, make my own figure and I'm going to do that making some good old sprue goo so for anyone who hasn't seen uh, my older videos uh, something I used to make a lot of was sprue goo uh, basically, to make this, all you need is uh, some acetone in a jar. As you can see, that's what I'm doing here. The one I get is normally one of the cheapest ones you can get, the acetone, and it's, I think it's something like 99.9% sort of acetone. Um, and then, obviously, what you need to do is grab all these sprues. Uh, these are obviously the bits that are left over from the, uh, the WizKids frameworks. Uh, generally, these are the bits that you kind of like throw away or leave in a box or, well, never see again. So basically I cut these up and there's no real sort of size to this other than making sure you cut them up so they actually fit inside the jar that you've got the acetone in. So I cut them up reasonably small because obviously the smaller they are the quicker they kind of dissolve. And once I've got loads and loads it's just a case of then carefully putting them in the jar. Well I say carefully to sort of hoof them in really. Yeah so in the jar they go and then basically what you need to do is walk away and leave it because it takes around about 7-8 hours for it to fully dissolve. Uh, so yeah, so let it dissolve, go off, do other stuff. It's difficult for me to do a time lapse um, of this stuff dissolving, but here it is, and this was roughly about, I don't know, about an hour and a half, maybe two hours later. And as you can see, it's well and truly dissolving. And this one was probably about three, four hours later, and yeah, it's on its way to being sprue goo, which we'll be able to use later on. So while that is still dissolving, we can crack on and start making the framework. So basically I want this little figure to fit on one of these sort of 50mm bases and I'm going to build the character on this cork. So I'm going to have a bit of a framework inside him um, just because of the sprue goo, it kind of lives up to its name, it really is gooey and it takes quite a while for it to sort of re-harden. So it's good to have some sort of skeleton underneath it. So I'm going to use a few, uh, few of the leftover bits from previous builds and basically I like the idea of these arms. I think these are, these are pretty cool. So that's what I'm going to be, uh, going to be using. And yeah, simply make a little skeleton up, glue the arms on, and then it's time to get the sprue goo on. So say so it's now been at least eight hours, and it's well and truly at the consistency we want, which is gooey, which is why I call it sprue goo. And yeah, using a little tool, it's just a case of uh, sort of gradually building it up. Because the one thing about this stuff, I say it really is gooey. Um, so if you put too much on at once, it'll basically just all sag down to the bottom. So it's a case of just putting a little bit on at a time, uh, letting some of it dry and then putting another little layer on and just keep repeating that process. Um, but yeah, it's, it's fun stuff to work with and it certainly has been quite some time since my last sprue build, which I believe was in fact the, uh, the Towel Manta. Um, so yeah, that, obviously that was quite a, quite a large build, uh, but yeah, that probably was my last one. Uh, and obviously because I'm not doing any sort of Warhammer stuff anymore, that's kind of why I've not really had any sprues about to sort of make anything. But now I am building lots of these uh, the WizKids Frameworks um, figures. Um, yeah, I have quite a lot of sprues, so yeah, I'm going to start using them and making a few more bits and pieces. So the figure I'm kind of building, um, there was no real sort of direction or plan to it, other than it's going to kind of look a little bit like the, uh, the Great Unclean one. Um, again, from Warhammer, and this is actually something, oh, I think this is one of the first builds I actually did with, uh, with Sprue Goo. Um, well, I don't know, a good year and a half ago. Um, go check that video out guys, it is still uh, somewhere on my channel. It's definitely one of the, uh, the much older ones. But also I made, I made a much larger uh, Great Unclean one. Well basically I made it the, to the same size that it is for, um, for Warhammer. But obviously this little chap is going to be a lot smaller. Because um, obviously I want to use this possibly in one of my D&D uh, campaigns. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's a lot smaller but it's still a little bit bigger than the, uh, the typical sort of D&D characters. And one good thing about the uh, making this sort of character with this stuff, sprue goo, it's very difficult to keep it nice and smooth. Um, it's a lot easier to make it a bit more textured, a bit rougher. Um, and as you'll see, as this build sort of goes on, it starts looking more and like sort of rotten flesh uh, and sinewy bits and little bits of muscle and stuff. But uh, yeah, so it's quite fun to work with. So that's, that's sort of the rough sort of shape and look. Um, so if you haven't seen the Great Unclean one, uh, go and check it out, and this is going to look fairly similar, as in it's one huge big blob, 
Um, he, he has got some legs, but he, he doesn't actually stand on them. They seem to be sort of well, one to the side, well, both obviously either side. Um, and then he's going to have uh, some of his guts hanging out. So we'll be having that in it as well. Uh, but yeah, definitely fun fun to sort of build. And so using sprue goo is, is, is different. Because uh, as you can see, when you first get it out, it does stick uh, quite a lot to whatever it's touching. But then obviously as it starts to dry, um, you kind of get like a skin on the outside. Uh, but it's, it's then still very, very soft on the inside. And this is why if you keep sort of manipulating it, moving it around... This is where you'll start adding lots and lots of sort of texture, um, divots, and just sort of nibbly knobbly bits, basically. Um, oh yeah, that's something I haven't said. I didn't say that when I was cutting the um, cutting the sprues. Man, I forgot about that, didn't I? So yeah, again, those who've been here for a while know that um, when I was making lots of videos with uh, sprues, um, yeah, I would say the word nibbly knobbly bits a hell of a lot of times, as basically that's what I would refer to the bits that I'm cutting up. So you get the sprue, cut it up into the nibbly knobbly bits, and then they get put into the acetone, which then gets turned into sprue goo. I do normally wear gloves when first touching the uh, the sprue goo, guys. Uh, but this piece I sort of pulled out and left out for about an hour, maybe an hour and a half. So it's basically got like a it's semi dried, as in it's got like a proper skin on the outside, but it's still soft as you can see, because it does take well probably about another seven eight hours for this stuff to sort of fully harden. So yeah, it's kind of like sort of seven eight hours for it to dissolve in acetone, and then about another seven seven eight hours for it to sort of reharden. It is fun to build things with sprue goo, but the only downside is you do have to leave a long time in between each sort of stage. So this sort of thing, every time I've done a little bit to it, I've had to leave it for like at least a couple of hours for it to sort of start hardening before then applying more sprue goo. Otherwise, as I say, if you put too much on at once, if you, after about half an hour, you'll go back and look at it. And it will just sagged down to the bottom. So yeah, it's fun to work with, but it is it is a lot of time consuming, uh, just because of the uh, the wasted time in between sort of each layer as you're building it up. Uh, but the good thing is, um, on this one, I was actually working on another project at the same time. So yeah, so there wasn't a case of me just sitting around waiting for this. I would do a little bit, then go on the other project, then come back to this project, and so on and so forth. So there we are, he's, uh, he's not far off being complete now, just a few toes at the back um, and then I'm going to drape some more sort of uh, goo all over him just to make him look a bit more hideous and a bit more messy. Just using a smaller tool for this as this obviously makes sort of thinner sort of strands on it and as you can see there's like little whispery bits all over the place uh, which say works really well for making a monstrosity like this. Um, I have had a go at making sort of trying to make some neat looking figures with sprue goo, but I say it is just difficult to um, to basically shape it how you want it and to stop it all looking wrinkly and old and well disgusting. So yeah, so definitely for unclean sort of figures like this, it's the it's the perfect stuff to use. But I am going to making some videos where I show obviously how to make panels with the sprue goo, um, make, be able to make walls, floors. All kinds of other stuff. Um, again, if you go back and look at a lot of my older videos, um, you'll see that a lot of stuff can be made with sprues. And not just sprue goo, um, actually making things with the sprues as they are, but just sort of cutting them up and using them in sort of certain ways. Yeah, so that's him done now. I'm really pleased with how he's come out. Um, obviously, you can take him off his little uh, little base, stick him on another one with some blue, uh, blue tack on. Although, obviously, it's white tack, but we still call it blue tack. Um, and yeah, he's ready for painting. So I try to do the Zenithal priming, uh, but unfortunately I haven't got a black spray. I've only got a grey, and even the grey I had was quite a, a light grey. Um, so I did them all grey all over, and then obviously just did a whispery white from above. Uh, but I am going to get some black spray, uh, some black primer that is, um, just because I want to go doing the Zenithal priming, especially because I want to use the uh, these speed paints a lot more. So I think having that variation in the uh, the primer. Uh, should come, ac come across really well. So I'm starting off with obviously the green because I, I kind of wanted it to look a little bit like a, an orc that's gone a bit bit, bit wrong. Um, yeah, just going over the whole thing with the army paint, a speed paint green. And yeah, I think this, this kind of work, works really well as a nice sort of uh, base to him. And then obviously the tummy is going to go in the red. Again, this is the, the speed paints um, just because it'll make it look really sort of, well, like blood and guts and gore, basically. If there's anything you guys want me to make out of sprues, don't forget to leave it in the comments, and I will have a go. 
Um, I know I am going to go through and have a sort of re-watch of a lot of the things that I've uh, previously made with sprues. And yeah, I'm going to have a go at redoing them in sort of more of a D&D &D sort of style look. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out for, for more videos on sprues coming very soon, basically. Um, yeah, I need to stop saying basically, don't I? I keep saying that. Right, so he's pretty much painted now. So it's just a case of going over, doing a bit of the old uh, the washing. Uh, which as we all know I just love doing so yeah a little bit of black wash on uh, on any of the items that uh, that weren't speed paints but then I kind of thought well he looks a bit too sort of neat and nice still and I really want him to look like um, well a bit of a bloody mess I guess so yeah I'm going to go over the whole thing now with uh, with a red wash um, even though obviously I've got the green wash on there I still fancy doing a red wash over the top just because again this is going to leave little areas and make him look more more of a monstrosity rather than just like a, a big uh, well big fat uh, yabba the hut no yabba the hut jabba the hut man brain's gone dead um, normally I would have edited that out but I can't be bothered so we we'll leave that bit in but yeah jabba the hut <laughs> but this guy's obviously yeah, a lot bloodier than uh, jabba the hut and then to finish him off I just went over and sort of highlighted a few of these all like sinewy sort of bits. Um, in a very light um, purple or mauve, I'm not too sure what the colour would be. Um, so yeah, I go over and do this and then I go over that again with a little bit of a wash and then I'm, uh, I'm done and I'm very happy with how he's turned out and yeah, I hope you agree. Let's take a look at some glamour shots. Hope you guys enjoyed this. I uh, just want to say a quick shout out and thank you to all my patrons as well as the sponsors for helping making it possible for me to sort of keep making these videos and obviously buying the materials I need to build stuff. So yeah guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Leave comments down below, hit the like button, all that good stuff and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, take care. Bye for now.